Uh, the warrant for today only has two problems. Warrant 109 is the first one is solve the quadratic equation by factoring. Hopefully you already uh, started or at least you're done. Yes. Um, the question was, do I need to graph it? <laughs> yes. I said from this point forward, any quadratic equation that we're solving, we need to graph. Number two, look at it as a regular uh, fraction plus another fraction and see what you can come up with. Uh, I'll give you some, uh, let's say about seven minutes to finish. So whoever's here, pause it please. Thank you. All right, here we go. Number one. Make some space here. First step. Set it in standard form. It's in standard form, solve for y. Step two, substitute zero for y. This becomes 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Step 3, factor the trinomial. Since uh, there is no pattern, um, there is no pattern, and this has a leading coefficient. I need to multiply this times this. So this becomes negative 6, negative 5. Factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 5 is 1 and negative 6. So therefore, we rewrite this, 2x squared. Instead of 5x, we write 1x minus 6x. That's what we got here. And then at the end, we bring down the last term, minus 3. Let's uh, find GCF for these two. GCF is x. We're left with 2x plus 1. GCF for these two is what? Three. Negative 3. And we're left with 2x plus 1. Therefore, my factors are 2x plus 1 and x minus 3, and all that equal to 0. Are we there so far? From there, we write each factor. We're right here. We write each factor equal to 0. 2x plus 1 equal to 0. x minus 3 equal to 0. Let's solve. Let's see. I subtract 1, subtract 1, 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, x <coughs> equals negative 1 half. Add 3, add 3, x equals 3, and these are my solutions. X intercepts, zeros and roots. All right, here we go. Here's our here's our graph. So this is negative one half. This is positive three. My y-intercept we get it from the equation, so it's negative three. There it is. And my parabola looks something like that. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay. Let me go to number two. Number two. For number two, I said look at it like a regular fraction. But hopefully now since you have more algebra in you, hopefully you see what I see. Let's see. Get it? All right. Do they have a common denominator? No. But this one has more than this. What do we need to multiply this by to make it 4a squared? 4a. 4A. So that means the numerator has to be times 4a. So therefore, this is 7 over 4a squared plus 8a over 4a squared. Now that we have a common denominator, we write it as one fraction. 4a squared. <coughs> and we combine the numerators. Draw your heart. Oh. So therefore, um, can we combine these two right here? No, no but I'm going to write it in standard form. What goes first? 8a plus 7. And we're done, since we can't do anything else. Copy that. And um, that's it. Are we there? All right. So at, at this time, um, Let's see. 
Benny Gopher to get a Saturday Academy slip, and I'll pause it for a little bit, or whoever's here. All right, so just to elaborate on the Saturday Academy slip, it says uh, this Saturday, March 28th from 8 to 11 on the Saturday Academy slip. Yes, everybody has that one in front of you? And um, basically we're going to retake the commutative party number five. Not the factory one, the one we just took, um, remember that 15 problem one? Not that one. The previous one, which was, uh, I think it was 34 problems. That's the one we're going to re review and retake on Saturday Academy. Therefore, pay attention to what I'm about to say. We close grades this Saturday, I mean this Friday. We're not taking any other cumulative party until after we close grades. So the only two big cumulative parties that you need to have good scores on is this one, the one we're retaking on Saturday, and the factoring polynomials one, which is some of you already started retaking that at lunch, right? And we're going to continue, uh, not tomorrow, on Wednesday, because tomorrow I have a meeting at lunch. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are the retakes for the factoring polynomials party, yes? What about the one we just took last week? Is it going to go The one, yeah, it is going in, but that one I'm waiting for people that were absent to take, well, the pop party from Friday. Okay? So, with that said, please, pretty please, those of you that need to retake this community party, be here on Saturday. Okay? All right, set that aside and get a blank sheet of paper out, please. Title it, The Quadratic Formula. The Quadratic Formula. We do not need uh, a Fourier model because we're still on quadratic equations. Look at the objective. It says, I can solve and graph quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Let's read together. One, two, three. I can solve and graph quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So it's the same objective, the only thing now we're going to add using the quadratic formula. Okay? So, we don't need a Fourier model because we already know what quadratic equations are. We do need steps. It's only six steps. Copy these steps. Only six. Number one, set the quadratic equation in standard form. Step two, identify A, B, and C. Step three, write the quadratic formula and substitute. Step four, solve. Step five, graph. Step six, check. Okay? Copy that, please. And whoever's here, can you pause it, please? Thank you. Give them about two minutes. <laughs> All right, so we're back. Let's see. So once again, set the quadratic equation in standard form. We already know how to do that. Identify A, B, and C. We'll revisit that. I, we saw some of this uh, last semester. Step three, write the quadratic formula and substitute. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Solve, graph, and check. So, uh, underneath this, uh, your steps, I want you to write this down, please. I want you to write the quadratic formula. Nice and neat like mine. Bam. Oh, this is an odd. Wow, be nice. That was done on purpose. So that so that some of you wouldn't feel left out. <laughs> All right, here we go. Write this down, please. If you have your colored pens, get them out. We got X equals... Yeah, just follow the colors that I changed to. I started with black, yes. X equals minus B with red plus minus square root B with red squared minus 4 A with blue C with green over 2 and A with blue. That's it. Yeah, that's it.
It is fun. Remember that towards the end of the year, it's going to get fun-er. <laughs> yeah, so... No, I say funner on the spot. Damn. All right, here we go. We got the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, some asked in the past, why the plus minus? Let me revisit that from the beginning of the year. I'm going to take you way back to when you were uh, brand new eighth graders. And I said, to find the square root of 16, remember that? It means what number times itself gives us 16. So then some of you said 4 and 4. And I said, what other number times itself? Negative 4 times negative 4. Therefore, get it? Therefore? My answer is positive 4 and negative 4. That's why we write plus, minus. Remember that? Okay, so with that said, I just wanted to revisit that. But what we're going to focus on today <coughs> is the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, let's see. There's a question over here. Yes. Why did we say x equals minus b? Isn't it a minus b? Same thing. Be nice. Okay. The question is uh, that why, instead of saying minus b, why don't we say negative b? Um, in order for you to memorize it, it takes longer to add more words to the to the rhythm. So, x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a x equals minus b plus minus square root 
B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Turn your paper over and tell the uh, your neighbor your quadratic formula, please. I'm going to pause it for a little bit. Pause it. All right, so now that we got this uh, memorized, everybody got it? Yeah, yeah. All right, turn your paper over in the back of your paper of your Cornell notes. Copy this down, example Q. Example Q. It says, solve by factoring and using quadratic formula. First, we're going to use the quadratic formula since we already know how to solve by factoring. Is that correct? So example Q, write this down, y equals negative 3x squared minus 9x minus 6. All right, so let's go over the steps together. Step one, according to the notes I gave you, says uh, write the quadratic equation in standard form. Standard form means from highest degree to lowest degree. Remember that? So let's see. Highest degree on this one was 2. The next degree is 1. And the other degree is what? 0. Is it from highest to lowest? Yes, it's already in standard form. Okay, so we got that down. Step two, identify A, B, and C. So underneath each term, we need, we're going to write the, the letters. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Does everybody see what I'm doing? So then I want you to box the coefficient here, that is A, coefficient here, that is B, and the constant is How are we doing? Good? All right. So step one, standard form. Step two, identify A, B, and C. Step three, write the quadratic formula and substitute values. So let's write our quadratic formula. X equals minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Bless you. Now let's substitute values. To substitute, ever since we started substituting and evaluating expressions from the beginning of the year, I asked you to open up parentheses. Is that correct for variables? So check this out. Let's rewrite this. x equals minus parentheses plus minus square root parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses parentheses over 2 parentheses. Let me move the negative a little bit up. There it is. All right. So A, where does A go? Next to the 4 in, a, in the denominator. And what is the value of A? Negative 3. So that goes here, negative 3, negative 3. What is B? Negative 9. It goes at the beginning and inside of the radical, negative 9 squared. And C is negative 6. So far, so good? So at this point, we're going to go ahead and simplify this equation. So let's see. Let's do this one together. x equals, what is negative times the negative? Positive 9 plus minus square root. So what is negative 9 squared? Negative 9 times negative 9, that's 81. Negative 4 times negative 3, that's positive Negative 4 times negative 3, that's positive 12 times negative 6, that's negative 72. And all that over 2 times negative 3, that's negative 6. So far, so good? We're still not done simplifying because we have this radical that we need to get rid of. So let's see, x equals 9 plus minus square root. What is 81 minus 72? 9 and then all that over negative 6. x equals 9 plus minus, square root of 9 is 3, and all that over negative 6. All right? Are we there so far? Yes, Mr. Cube. All right, good. Now check this out. Since we are there, I want you to put your pens, pencils down really quick. I'm going to show you the next step. Now, when we solve quadratic equations, remember that we started by factoring? 
how many x-intercepts do we usually get? Everyone? Two. Is that correct? So check this out. Look what I'm going to do from here. From here, since it's already simplified, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write x sub 1 and x sub 2. Now let me show you why. Look up, please. So now, who notices here that there's a plus and a minus? So this is saying to rewrite this one for the positive and one for the negative. So watch. 9 plus 3 over negative 6. And the second x will be 9 minus 3 over negative 6. Copy that. Everybody see what I did? Okay. Yeah. Copy that. All right. So from there, let's just simplify. What is 9 plus 3? 12. 12 divided by negative 6. That gives me negative 2. What is 9 minus 3? That's 6 divided by negative 6. That gives me negative 1. What are these called? Solutions, x-intercepts, zeros, or what? Roots. So far, is it good? Yeah. And basically, what we just found out is how to solve a quadratic equation using the second method, which is using the what? The quadratic yeah. formula. Everybody with me? Notice that we didn't do the Power Ranger or anything like that. We just used the formula. So let's graph this. Like everything, right? Somebody said, are we going to graph? Of course. Bah. So let's graph this. My x-intercept is negative 2. That's one of them. The other one is negative 1. What is my y-intercept? It's the last part of the equation. It's negative 6, which is down here. Now, this might look kind of weird if we're trying to do a happy face. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. But look at the coefficient of this equation. What is the coefficient of the leading coefficient? I mean, the sign of the leading coefficient. Mm -hmm. Negative, that means it's going to be an upside-down parabola, yes? So, therefore... And that's our parabola. Copy that, please. How are we doing? Good? Good? Show me with your fingers how comfortable you are with, with this so far. One being the lowest, five being the highest. Okay, we got some fives, 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 threes, fives. Some of you need a manicure. Fives, threes, fives. All right. All right, here we go. So, um, let's go over the process again. Let's make sure that we got it. Step one, we need to make sure the equation is in standard form. Step two, rewrite the quadratic formula. Step three, substitute, I mean, that's still, my bad, I'm skipping the step. Step one, standard form. Step two, identify A, B, and C. Step three, quadratic formula and substitute. Step four, solve, graph, and then we check. Do we know how to check? You guys don't remember how to check? You, you take one of the points, negative 2, and write it as a coordinate, and substitute the values into the equation. Remember that? Yes? All right. I'm not going to do it just to, for the sake of time. Now, check this out. There's another part of the quadratic formula that I want you to see. Look up, please. These, this expression under the radical, under the square root, b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. That has a particular um, task. And let me show you the task. Whenever you see this expression, and it's simplified to lowest terms, if at the end we end up with a positive number, then you're going to get two solutions. 
If that number, once you simplify it, ends up being a negative, therefore you get zero solutions. However, if at the end that n is not a positive nor a negative, what number could it be if it's not a positive or a negative? Zero. zero. If it's ending up being a zero, mm -hmm. then you get one solution. So make sure you copy this, please, because you're going to need this for tonight's home play. So what is the discriminant? Is the expression under the radical. Now let's see what number did we get once we simplified. Let's see. What was the number inside of the radical once we simplified? Nine. Nine. Is that a positive, negative, or is that zero? Positive. positive. Did we get two solutions? Yes, because yes, that's what it's saying. Because later on I'm going to ask you, use the quadratic formula and tell me how many solutions we're going to get on this, e on this equation. I might not ask you to find me the solutions. I might just ask you, find me how many solutions. Everybody with me? Yes, Mr. Q. All right. Questions, comments, autographs? We're good? All right, let's go to the next one. Example number one. So uh, we did one together. Let's do another one. And let's see if we can go a little bit faster now. Here we go. Example one. It says solve using the quadratic formula. 2x squared plus 7x plus 5 equals 0. Copy that, please. So, everyone, step one. Is it in standard form? Yeah, two, one, zero, yes, standard form. Step two, identify A, B, C. So what's A? Two. What's B? Positive seven. And what's C? Positive five. Are we there so far? All right. Step three, write your quadratic formula and substitute. Let's see, Isaac, quadratic formula, go. Um, x equals minus b plus minus a root b squared minus 4ac over 2. Bam, like a boss. So, from there, to substitute, we open parentheses for all the variables, yes? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. So this is x equals minus parentheses plus minus square root parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses parentheses over 2 parentheses. So let's see, what is a2? That goes here and here. What is b7? It goes here and here. And c is 5. So let's see, I'm going to give you uh, about 20 seconds to go ahead of me. I'll pause it for a little bit. Whoever's here, pause it, please. 20 seconds. Thank you. All right, let's see what we got. So let's see, x equals negative times 7 is negative 7 plus minus square root. 7 squared is 49. Negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8 times 5, that's negative 40 over 4 x equals negative 7 plus minus square root 49 minus 40 that's 9 over 4 by the way look at the discriminant it's a positive 9 how many answers we're going to get 2 okay good so from there x equals negative 7 plus minus 3 over 4 how are we doing up to right there good so from here we got x sub 1 and x sub 2. So let's see. x sub 1 is with the positive, so that's negative 7 plus 3 over 4. And the negative is mm, negative 7 minus 3 over 4. So let's see, I'm going to simplify. This is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. This is negative 10 over 4, which is negative 2.5. What are those called? Solutions, x-intercepts, roots. Okay. So, let's graph this really quick. See, we got
All right, we got uh, negative 1, negative 2.5, and my y-intercept is positive 5. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. So, hold on. So for home plate tonight, we got pages 607 to 608. Oh, to 608. Numbers in page 607 is numbers 10 through 12, and 608 numbers 1 through 7. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next slide. Do this one by yourself, please. Example two. A uh, good one, everyone. Uh, I'll let you finish that one by yourself. A uh, good one. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Pause it, please, whoever's here. Yeah. Okay.